Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, shuffle the array. We're given an input array nums, which could be divided into two halves. So we have a bunch of X values and we have a bunch of Y values and we have equally half and half. So we say we have N X values and we have N Y values. We want to shuffle this array such that the first X value goes in the first spot and the first Y value goes in the second spot and the second X value goes in the third spot. The second Y value goes in the fourth spot and we just keep going just like this with our X's and Y's. Now this is pretty easy to do if we have an output array, we declare like a separate array for the output. I can show you the code for that pretty quickly. It would look something like this where we have a result output array. We go through the first half of the positions in the array. We take the first value, which is the X value, append it to the result, and we take the Y value. We do that by offsetting by N. We take I plus N, which we know is half the length of the input array nums, and then we append the Y value, and we keep doing this for every pair of values in the array, and then we return the result. Pretty easy. But is it possible to solve this problem without declaring an output array? The answer is yes, but you probably wouldn't come up with it by yourself. It's definitely complicated. It requires some fancy bit manipulation tricks, but I'll go ahead and show it to you now because I think it is kind of an interesting and useful solution. There's some pretty cool ideas behind it. It's definitely a good opportunity to brush up on your bit manipulation skills. So the main motivation is that the maximum value in the input array is going to be less than or equal to a thousand. What that means is that normally we have integers and they take up 32 bits, not in Python, but in most languages, a number will have 32 bits allotted for it. But if a number is going to be less than or equal to a thousand, it's not going to take up those full 32 bits. A number of a thousand can be represented with 10 bits because two to the power of 10 is equal to 1024. So that's the maximum integer we can represent with 10 bits. I think it's actually minus one that. So I think 1023 is the max integer, but close enough, close enough to a thousand. So we only need 10 bits. Now here's the part that you probably wouldn't come up with by yourself. And it is that for every value in the first half of the array, what we can do is actually combine the pair of values. We can take X and Y and then store them in the first spot of the array. We can take the next pair, X and Y, store them together in the second spot. Because we have the 32 bits available for us, we know each of these values is gonna take up 10 bits, so we can store them together in 32 bits. Now, why exactly would we do that? Suppose we can do it, why would we do it? Well, let's say we have those pairs of values here. What can we do? Well, iterating from the beginning to the end, we can extract those values. We can extract the X and Y values stored in this spot. What are we gonna do? Well, the X value is gonna stay here and the Y value is gonna go to the next position. But notice that's a problem because if we take the Y value and overwrite it here, we got rid of the XY pair that was stored here. So we lost data. And that's the problem with this solution. It's hard to solve it without extra memory without overwriting data. But it is possible, you have to be a little clever, and that is, instead of going from front to back, we're gonna go from back to the front. So the pair of values stored here, the XY pair, we know that corresponds to the end of the array because that's how we built these pairs in the first place. We took this X value and this Y value and then stored it here. The reason we stored them here is because we didn't wanna overwrite data that we were gonna need later on. So now that we have this XY pair, what we're gonna do is store the Y value in the last position and the X value in the second to last position. And same thing for this, one here that we know there's going to be an XY pair stored here. We're going to put the Y value here and the X value here. And we're going to keep doing that for every pair that we stored in the first half of the array until we have built the entire shuffled array. 
So that's the high level behind this solution. There's a couple bit manipulation tricks that you might need to review or maybe learn for the first time. How can we store the X and Y values in a 32-bit integer anyway? And that is by taking this value here. We know in terms of the 32 bits, there's gonna be an X value already stored there. It's gonna take up like the first 10 bits. One thing we could do is take this X, shift it to the left by 10 bits. What this does is it makes space available. It makes 10 bits available over here for us then to add the Y value here, taking up the first 10 bits and the X will take up the next 10 bits. Well, how do we add the Y in the first place? Well, that is bitwise or because we know when the X value is over here, this is gonna be filled with a bunch of zeros. Whatever Y value we have, maybe the Y value we have is four, which would look like this in binary, one zero zero. When we bitwise or all these zeros with one zero zero, we take these, they're both zero, nothing. These are both zero, nothing. We have a single one here, so then we would replace this with the Y value. So this is what it would look like. So we would say the Y value is now stored here. So that's how we store the values here. We're also gonna need to extract both of the values as well. One way to do that is by using the bitwise and operation using a bunch of ones. And we can get the X value by just doing the reverse of what we originally did, which is taking this and then shifting it to the right by 10, that will give us the X value in this spot. So those are the main bit manipulation operations we need. Oh, by the way, and to actually get this Y value, how many ones would we need to logic and it with or bitwise and it with? Well, we would only want there to be ones that take up the first 10 digits because that's what we know the Y value is occupying. It's only occupying 10 digits. So we want these ones to correspond with the first 10 digits because that, in that case, this X will cancel out. Anding this X with a bunch of zeros here is gonna make this cancel out to also be zero. But these ones, how many are we gonna need? We're gonna need 10 of them. How do we get 10 ones in a row? Well, we take two to the power of 10, which is gonna be a one followed by 10 zeros. And then we subtract one from it, which is gonna be a zero followed by 10 ones. So we just say two to the power of 10 minus one is gonna be the number we logic and this with if we want to extract the Y value. So that's the main idea here. It's pretty complicated just to save the O of N space complexity. This will be O of one space complexity, but still a linear time algorithm in terms of time complexity. But now let's code it up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go through every value in the input array, or at least the first half of the values, but we can still get the Y value. I'll show you how, but we're gonna get the X value stored at index I. We're gonna shift it to the left by 10, and then we're gonna store that in its original position. We're just making space for the Y value at this point. We get the Y value by taking I plus N. N is the offset. And like I mentioned, we can take this and logic or it with, or bitwise or it with, the value stored here, which will basically insert the Y value. So we want to take this and store it in the position. So this will store the X and Y values together in a single spot in binary. Next, we want to iterate through the first half of the array in reverse order. We want to iterate through the pairs that we just stored, but we want to do it in reverse order because we don't want to overwrite uh, values that we're going to end up needing to use later on. So we're going to start at the middle point of the array, keep going until we reach the beginning and decrement by one each time. We're gonna extract the X and Y values. We can get the Y value first by doing this, by taking the value already stored and uh, logic or bitwise anding it with two to the power of 10 minus one. Just as I mentioned earlier, we can get the X value just by taking the value that's already stored and then shifting it to the right by 10. Now to actually store these values in their correct spot, we know that's gonna be towards the end of the array. So I'm gonna create a second pointer for that. J, which I'm gonna initialize to be the last index in the array initially. And nums of J can then be set to Y nums of j minus one, the next spot can be set to x. And after we do that, we probably want to decrement this not by one, but by two. 
because we just stored two values, so we have to shift it over by two. But that's pretty much the entire code. Now we can go ahead and return the nums. We didn't have to declare any extra data structures. Let's run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does, and it's pretty efficient. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.